Hi everyone, welcome back. So the look that I'd like to recreate for you today would be this one that I did for Carly Kloss. Um, she has the same length hair as me and I'm going to use the curling iron in a different way, a way that I love to use it to get a beautiful bump into the hair. Um, and then the other way is the one with Annabelle here and she has longer hair so I wanted to show you like a version of the shorter and, and the longer. Um, the one that I did on Annabelle was on a trip um, for Couture Fashion Week in Paris. Um, such a beautiful trip. Love Paris, love that trip. Um, yeah, okay, so stop, stop, the, stop the reminiscing. Um, we'll all be traveling again, hopefully super soon, uh, but coming from you obviously today from my home studio. Anyway, so there, there's two of different variations on this look. Um, so I have used a couple of products on my hair to prep it. Obviously I've shampooed my hair. Ideally, again, if you can work on clean towel dried hair, ideal. The blow dry is the preparation for this look and I'm going to blow dry in the same way that I want to sort of the, my finished result. Um, so thinking about that in your head, how the hair is going to end up will be how you start with your foundation of, of the blow dry. Um, but today I figured I'd use some products. I love products that, styling products that I feel are conditioning my hair at the same time as working as a styling product. So today I wanted to use the Elixir All Time. Um, this has oil in it, um, but it's not greasy. So it has oil in it, but it, so it seals the hair, so it's conditioning, and it also has the holding power in it as well. So those two things work together with this product. And most of it, I'm gonna put on the lengths and ends of my hair, which is where I have the bulk of the color, right? So again, you know me by, then, by now, I love to section as I'm putting products on. So making sure that you're getting that really good even application. With this product, you've got to give it a really good shape because with anything with oil, it does tend to separate in the bottle a little bit. So make sure you shake it up, otherwise you're, you're just it's not going to work as well for you. So sectioning, I mean, your sectioning can be sort of relatively rough, but just try and get it on in a good even kind of mist through the hair. And not using loads of product here. I'm going to section, I'm going to go through, and as you can see, I'm putting it onto the lengths and ends and I'm just giving it like one bump at the lengths and ends so um, I'm keeping it like just a super fine mist of product through the hair remember most of my color um, and the dry area is through the ends which tends to be for all of us if we have color on our hair so then working the same situation over on the other side just literally misting that product through really making sure that you have a super even application. Now, you know your hair better than anyone else, right? So if you feel that your hair's a little bit dry in the front, by all means, put a little bit more product on the front. The front does tend to be the drier area because that's where we concentrate most of our blow drying. It's where we concentrate most of just the, the extra, everything happens in that front area because that's the area that we see, right? It's also slightly finer in the front just by the nature of how our hair grows so again if it's slightly fine in the front it will be a little bit more susceptible to breakage now i know like i said you know your hair better than anyone else i know my hair on the top here has a little bit more of like a, a slightly rougher texture so if you want to put a little bit more product onto that back area then you know go ahead to do that it's really just a case of what you how you know your hair so just be aware of, of that when you're, um, when you're applying your product. And like I'm always saying, products are designed to go onto clean towel dried hair. Um, so that's the, the, the preparation for my clean towel dried hair. I'm on the round brush kick today. Um, mainly this one. I don't want too much of a bevel in the hair. I just want to keep it really super modern and kind of straight on the ends, but I do want it to be coming around slightly and I wanna get volume into the top here. So I am gonna be using this one mainly. I'm gonna use this just because my hair's short underneath. Um, if your hair's longer, I would try and stick to this one because then as you're blow drying down, your ends are gonna stay a little bit straighter with just a nice bevel, but not too much of a bevel with this one. So that's the combination. So I'm gonna blow dry 
as a foundation and then I'll walk you through that process as I go along. And then once I've blow dried, I'm gonna come in with my Howie Josh curling iron. There's two different sizes depending on how much of a bump you are going for. So we will, I'll go through that with you and you can see um, maybe different ones actually in different areas of the hair to give you an irregular wave because I love an irregular wave. I don't like anything that's too uniform. So one side different to the other, that's all super good. All right. So try using the dryer on the medium heat and medium speed, just to be kinder to the hair. Rough dry a little to get rid of some excess moisture. And then it's really all about keeping the brush and the dryer moving all the time. Bumping the root and beveling the ends and keeping the angle of the dryer and the nozzle facing downwards as well, which is what smooths the outside of the hair, that cuticle. And here you can see brushing. It is the continuous action of going through exactly these stages until you feel like the hair's dry enough. I like to start all my blow dries from the front because that's where we all have the strongest movement. Here I'm using the natural movement actually to, to sort of aid the final result because here I want to have like a lot of lift in through those cowlicks. So elevating up and then giving it like an extra bump underneath to really accentuate that lift. And then when you brush it back against the growth, you can see how much really nice lift that's opening the face. I'm also going to give a little bit of volume in through the parting area by pushing the brush backwards and then lifting up into the flow. Here you can see that really beautiful shine. So that's from the product, it's from the brushing, the dryer, and just that continuous action through the hair. In the back, which is the area that I actually can't see, but I'm doing it through feel, which you can do as well. And I'm just snapping that brush back at the root to get the tension. In the crown, I wanna have a little bit more volume. So here I'm elevating the hair straight up in the brush, continually using that same action and then bumping underneath to kind of seal that in. Just to make sure you're connecting the sides with the back, just going over that. So here's your blow dry. Volume, coming under. I mean, I just love this movement that you get. And that's from the big, just from the big round brush. And you can, with this haircut, you flick it and you see the underneath, which comes underneath, which shows off that darkness. Darkness, the darkness of the underneath. Um, anyway, so that's your blow dry. Now you can stop here. Got a lot of volume, got your volume through here. And that's a look, right? But I'm gonna take it one step further, as I promised I would, using my, curling iron and this is where I'm going to put the bumps in. Um, with your parting, I didn't really set my part as I was blow drying because I wanted it to have a much more natural look. So then you can just go in afterwards and you can just set the parting, tweak it, make sure that it's exactly where you want it, but keep it irregular like that. Just before I put the iron in and do the bump, I want to give this a little lift on the top. So why not while I'm doing this, let this be setting in. So I'm going to take like a sort of section like a square section in the top here lift this up and using my tail comb bringing it slightly forward i'm actually going to tease underneath that piece and then i don't yeah that, the little short bits i don't i don't need then what i do is I'm using it kind of a little bit like a roller and I'm just gonna put that around, bend that under, keeping the same bevel that I have, but I just wanna get a little bit more support in underneath there. And then using my clips, just come in and clip that underneath on both sides. Okay, that's gonna give me a little bit of root lift to get that kind of good 60s little bump in the back there. One thing that I always have to do when I'm working with the clients that I'm working on is making sure that I keep a huge element of sophistication. And it is very subtle nuances that I'm working with, but it also has to have a taste level. So for me, in my head, I'm always thinking sophisticated, taste, but also modern. And modern to me means not doing something that's totally retro 
of the look that could be your inspiration, but it's bringing it into a modern element, which in this case, I could have a real 60s bardo bump on the top, but keeping the ends a little straighter and with this haircut, keeping it a little blunt on the bottom will give it that modern look. So that's just so you have a little insight into my thinking as I'm working on my clients. Now I've got that in, I'm gonna use the iron. This is the Harry Josh, the larger one. And I'm gonna work through the front because that's the section obviously that we're gonna we're gonna see first of all. And that's really where I want most of this movement anyway. So I'm gonna use it just like this. I'm just bumping. I'm not actually opening the iron. I'm not using it like that. I'm just trying to get a little bump. You see in there, I have a little bump, which has started to take away that really rounded, kind of quite a little bit retro maybe, or not quite so modern. So then that one's going in. So then what I wanna do is I want the next one to come out. So then I'm gonna go under like this. But I'm not gonna, the end I'm still keeping in my hand because I don't want the end to actually have too much of a bevel. You see? That's the movement that I'm going for. It's, it's so subtle. These things are, as I said, super, super subtle. And what you can do if you wanna exaggerate it a little bit more is go in with the slightly smaller one. So all these things that you're doing is kind of trial and error. You have the technique, you just go in and then you just do it to whatever you require from it. So in with the bevel and then just under. And then that end, I leave. So I don't have any other movement in that end that th th that was already there before, right? Now, coming to the next section, I'm gonna take this section and I'm gonna make it a little bit irregular. So what I'm gonna do now with this section is I'm gonna start with the larger iron and I'm going a little bit lower down just to give me a bevel into the head. And then you see how that looks once you're done. And if you like how that looks, you stick with it or you go in with the slightly smaller one to exaggerate it a little bit more because it is going to change slightly, right? Like this, as, you, as it drops down, it's going to just come out a little bit. So if you want to go back in just to exaggerate your technique a little bit and just to give you a little bit more. But what I'm actually trying to do now is kind of put like a little bit more of a head shape into it trying to get it to follow my head shape a tiny bit. Whereas this look, which is a beautiful look, it's more around an anti head shape. Whereas this is now coming down and around a little bit more with my head shape. So that's kind of the look that, um, that's really what I'm going for. And I'm just gonna continue that back. And I'm using my smaller one because it seems to be working better. You know, if your hair is slightly more porous, if you have a slightly natural wave in your hair, then you might find that you want to use the bigger one. I'm liking what this is doing now because it's still keeping me that, I see my end is blunt and then I have a little bit of extra movement through there. So I'm going to move on to the next section. And here, why don't I go in with the smaller one? Let's go in with the smaller one. And you can roll it up and down the hair. Just keep it kind of moving. But you don't have to worry about ridges because you're not using the clamp. So you're not gonna get a ridge, it's just a case of when you're happy with the result. Now, you see what that's doing? It's literally just giving me a dent into the hair. Okay, got that nice movement through there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take out this top area so we can sort of see what we have from here. This has been sitting now for a little while while I did the front, so we're gonna have a little bit of extra movement into that front area. Now, what you can do to finish off your look is to put a little bit, just a little bit of a dent in here, just to sort of cons the consistency working around the head. Just keep that going. Give you that irregular, that irregular look. Now, if you're working on longer hair, you would continue going down the hair. You would bump in different directions. So you'd bump this way, and then you would bump this way, and then you would go all the way down the hair like that. Um, okay, so now, what do I do for finishing? I always love to put in 
a little bit of cream afterwards and what would be the ideal cream today i think actually let me go with the let's use the fakai this is a little bit more of an oilier product but if you just use a tiny bit and work it through i think you're going to like the way that works so tiny 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 bit because this is as i say it's got olive oil in it which just sounds like it's going to be really good for your hair and it is working it all into the ends And a little scrunch up. Okay, so this is the final result. I hope you really like it. Super sophisticated, modern, and hopefully tasteful. Please subscribe. See you soon. Be well.